First of all, I want to thank Monty and the University of Huddersfield for enabling this delayed conference to take place virtually. The title of my presentation is Emotion and Enuranza, Gerard, the Gralias, and the Slow Movement of the Violin Concerto. And its opening quotation is by Albert Bonnet. Here is the whole passage. Those who admire the Castells admire them because they have lived them throughout their life in our festivals, because more than the titanic effort they represent is the joy of our people, the history and tradition of our region, the honour and admiration of our land, and perhaps because one day, far from our city, the cry of the Gralia would make us tremble with emotion and enuranza. Enuranza is a Catalan word meaning nostalgia. If the extraordinary spectacle of the building of huge castells or human pyramids by the jiquettes or lads of Vals would have counted amongst Roberto Gerard's most indelible childhood memories, then the Gralia, the Catalan shawm which accompanies this extraordinary feat, would have been an equally vivid presence in the soundscape of his youth. The cry of the Gralia, substituted by its nearest orchestral equivalent, the oboe, or a pair of oboes, does indeed resonate with emotion and enuranza in several of Gerard's works, including, most explicitly, the opening movement of Albarda Interludi Danza of 1937 and the Fourth Symphony, composed 40 years later. Today I'm going to focus exclusively on Gerard's references to the music of the Matinadas, Catalan dawn music traditionally performed by a small processional band of Gralia players with side drum accompaniment as they tour the town sounding their early morning alarm call on the first morning of a festival. Specifically I shall explore the extent to which Gerard's allusions to the distinctive sound world of this Catalan dawn music characterized by its repeated dotted rhythms, gentle undulating contours parallel harmony in thirds and bright C major tonality in the central largo of his autobiographical violin concerto, composed between 1942 and 1945, may have come to symbolise for the composer not just the nostalgia for a lost country, Catalonia, subject to Franco's cultural genocide, but for a lost ideal, that of a utopian republic that had fallen into the hands of a dictator. So let's listen to the music of the Matinadas. <laughs> Spring of 1939, Paris, a tiny hotel off the Place Saint-Sulpice, exile. Gerard had returned to Paris in January 1939 from Warsaw, where he'd been attending a meeting of the International Society of Contemporary Music Selection Committee, having learned that Barcelona had fallen to Franco's nationalists. We know from a letter that Gerard wrote to Schoenberg on the 2nd of December 1944 that it was during this time in Paris that he first heard a performance of Schoenberg's fourth string quartet, Opus 37, given by the Kolisch Quartet. In all probability, this would have been the work's French premiere, given at the Salle Chopin on the 17th of February 1939 in a concert that also included Berg's lyric suite and Debussy's string quartet. Gerard goes on to explain in the letter that the slow movement of his own violin concerto, composed in September 1944, 
was written as a homage to Schoenberg on the occasion of his 70th birthday and was partly based on the 12-note series of Schoenberg's fourth quartet. In a rare confessional statement, Gerard also revealed in the letter to Leo Black that during the compositional process, the concerto became intensely autobiographical. I simply could not avoid the past resuscitating in every one of its dim, fleeting phases and faces. Gerard could hardly have recalled that Schoenberg premiere without it triggering memories of the first few months of his exile in Paris, and with it, surely, a whole roller coaster of emotions. For the spring of 1939 was a time of profound psychological upheaval for the Gerard. Despair about the traumatic events of the Civil War, we prefer not to think about it, he wrote to his Catalan friend, Josep Chueta. What has happened is truly monstrous, coexisted with anxiety about the fate of his homeland and of the Gerards themselves. In another letter to Chueta, Gerard expresses the pessimism that begins to invade me regarding our country. And in yet another, written at a time when the invasion of German troops was looming and France's government was already preparing for war, he reports that in Paris people begin to speak with resignation about the war. All this begins to be frankly unnerving. As Gerard would later recall in his notebooks, all that he and his wife Poldy could do was study the situation as one pours over a chessboard that spells checkmate in so and so many moves, a very few moves in fact. Small wonder then that when a letter arrived from Edward Dent mentioning the possibility without offering false hopes of securing a refugee scholarship at safe haven for the composer in Cambridge, it seemed to the Gerards like a fairy tale. It is by contention that the Violin Concerto's central largo, a movement which traverses the gamut of emotions from hope to despair, reflects the extraordinary personal and historical circumstances that confronted the newly exiled composer during this intensely emotional Parisian spring of 1939. The key to unlocking its meaning lies, I believe, in its allusions not only to the music of Schoenberg's fourth string quartet, but to two of Gerard's own works, the ballet Don Quixote and the work whose orchestration he was working on in Paris, the ballet Soiree de Barcelona. It stylized matinadas in particular. In the ballet, they first appear on flutes and clarinets during the opening scene's cortege and are reprised with oboes replacing clarinets in the marriage cortege of Tableau 3, example 2a. But it is the all-pervading allusions to the music of the matinadas in the final tableau's opening dawn music no longer exclusively on wind instruments, which will also be the case in the violin concerto, that are of most interest in relation to the concerto, because two of its principal motivic ideas will be recalled and developed. The first of these stylized matinadas, introduced on violas, example 2b, is a gentle, rocking, dotted rhythm idea comprising a repeating descending minor third, followed by a repeated ascending major second motif, motif X. The second, again distinguished by its dotted rhythm, begins with a scalic ascent and is harmonized in parallel tenths, that is, compound thirds. A variant of this stylized matinata's theme, example 2C, again opening with a scalic ascent in parallel tenths, ends with an intervallic transformation of motive X, now comprising a descending major third and ascending minor second. It is this stylized matinada's music that goes on to provide the backcloth to a majestic statement on the French horn of that great hymn to Catalan freedom, El Segador's. And so to the concerto. 
Its slow movement is cast as a slow rondo, in which a serial elegiac chorale-like refrain, based on Schoenberg's tone row, alternates with dreamily impressionist, freely non-serial episodes, which function, according to the composer's programme note, as improvisatory chorale interludes. The first such interlude, figures 59 to 68, unfolds a series of four paragraphs which mount towards a hopeful C major climax before relapsing into seeming A minor despair. In the first of these paragraphs, the solo violin, with its highly ornamented quasi-melismatic figuration so redolent of Catalan folk song, muses melancholically against a hypnotic background ostinato. Both the ostinato's delicate impressionist scoring, strings, piano and harp, and the whole tone oscillation between A-flat and G-flat, distantly recall the music that accompanies Don Quixote's vision of Dulcinea in Gerard's ballet. But this initially diatonic, florid solo violin music soon becomes more twistingly chromatic, with a fleeting allusion to the Catalan folk song lament El Cotillo. This lament topic goes on to dominate the second paragraph, figures 61 to 3 as the solo violin's ornamental twisting music intensifies. The orchestral accompaniment now introduces a new sobbing triplet string motif, example 3A, which harks back to the sad and tender music that accompanies the procession of mournful women, orphans and maidens as they dance in front of the imprisoned Don Quixote in the final scene of Gerard's ballet example 3b, which doesn't include the solo flute part. What might lie behind this reference to the incarcerated Don Quixote? The answer, I would suggest, lies in the fact that, amongst other things, Gerard identified Cervantes' liberty-loving knight with the Republican ideal. Indeed, his politicisation of Don Quixote is nowhere more obvious than in the Pasadoble de la Santa Germandad of his Don Quixote ballet, 1940-41, where a sly little counter-melody on solo trumpet, based on the anti-fascist Republican Spanish Civil War song, Los Cuatro Generales, adapted from a folk song collected by Lorca, satirically mocks the Holy Brotherhood as they arrest and imprison the Don. The end of the ballet also encourages a political reading. Here the dying Don hands his sword to the priest, a gesture meant to represent the militancy of the church in Spain, according to Catherine Sawley Walker and the pointed reference, I would suggest, to the Te Deum which celebrated the nationalist victory in 1939, and which Franco presented his sword of victory to the Archbishop of Toledo. Bernard Benoliel has described the concerto's slow movement as a de profundis of the composer's exile, and in the third paragraph, beginning at figure 63, a glimmer of hope begins to rise from the depths as a new theme, let's call it New Dawn or Hope, for example, for A, which grows out of Soiree de Barcelona's dawn music motif X, is added to the strings keening triplets and the solo violin's florid figurations. At first, only a tonally blurred vision in which C major minor is bitonally pitted against its semitone neighbours, first D flat at figure 63, then B major four bars before figure 65, the passage mounts inexorably towards a luminous, tonally focused fortissimo C major climax at figure 65, the nearest thing in Gerard's whole output to Haydn's joyous C major outburst in the creation. Let there be light, and there was light. 
as radiant as the C major blaze of light which accompanies the opening of the fifth door in Bartok's Bluebeard's Castle, or even more suggestive in this context, the C major sunrises that open Strauss's Alzo Sprach Zarathustra and bring both Schoenberg's Guralita and Shimonovsky's opera King Roger to their respective closes. This is also a kind of dawn music, but of a distinctly Catalan variety. With its repeated double dotted rhythms, parallel compound thirds, opening scalic ascent, and motif X repetition, see example 5b, the passage is a clear allusion to the Matinadas derived dawn music that opens the final tableau of Soiree de Barcelona. Music which, as Leticia Sanchez de Andres has noted, reflected Gerard's desire somehow to stimulate the hope that a new dawn would arrive for the Spanish Republic and the Catalan nation. Before briefly exploring the rest of the movement, it is worth pointing out that this new dawn theme would go on to have an afterlife in Gerard's output that may throw additional light on its symbolic significance in the concerto. It appears in several of the cues that Gerard composed for the fifth episode, titled Desert Air Force, of the 15-part BBC documentary series War in the Air of 1954 concerning the air defence of the Middle East from the summer of 1940 to the end of 1941. In Q2M1, the theme takes the form of an A major chorale on four horns, as the narration details the heroic defence of Malta, surviving two years of bombardment by Hitler's Luftwaffe. It was also originally intended to accompany, but in the event was replaced by a reprise of the exotic sounding music with which the film opens, the final images of the film, Q3M5, shot in Tripoli following the defeat of the Axis forces in Northern Africa, the first major Allied triumph in the war. With Mussolini's empire now defeated, Allied airmen hoist the RAF flag walk through the ruins of a Roman temple and look out to sea. Whilst one cannot necessarily assume, of course, that a theme semantic import in one work is automatically transferred when that theme is quoted in another, it is hardly coincidental, in my view, that when Gerard was seeking material that might best express these two moments of great hope for the Allies in the battle against fascism, he decided to draw on this particular theme from the Violin Concerto, a theme that may already have come to symbolise for him a renewed sense of hope whether the hope of a new dawn for the Catalan nation and the Spanish Republic, hope of Allied victory in World War II, or the utopian hope embodied in Don Quixote's vision of a more perfect world based on liberty.
returning to the concerto, the radiant C major matinada's derived climax proves to be a false dawn as the music sinks down via a final subdued version of motive X into A minor, figure 66, and a forlorn duet between the flute and solo violin, whose sequence of descending minor second psi motifs signal a return to the lament topic. Following a brief agitato passage, the sobbing triplet Don Quixote motif returns, ushering in an abbreviated reprise of the sombre opening chorale. A second improvisatory chorale interlude follows between figures 69 and 75, fusing elements already heard. The solo violins ornamental figurations are now derived from the opening chorales Schoenbergian tone rope and are accompanied by even more intense accelerated sobbing than before, quintuplets replacing triplets. The Matinadas derive new dawn theme does eventually return on solo piano, figure 71 to 73, but proves to be just another false dawn, and the section ends with a violin cadenza and a return of the sobbing triplet motive before a final varied reprise of the opening chorale. A third improvisatory chorale interlude, an almost literal reprise of the first, is initiated, but soon peters out, the outcome left hanging in the air, unresolved until the finale's opening explosion of joy, with its clear allusions to the Marseillaise, symbolising, according to Gerard's pupil Hoekip Om's allied victory. But, as the subsequent wistful Sardana suggests, a passage that leads to the finale's emotional crisis, even that joy must be tempered for exiled Catalan Republicans such as Gerard, by the fact that Allied victory in the war would not necessarily bring the restoration of democracy in Spain. Thank you. <laughs>